Okay, so welcome to another video on statics and in this video we're going to be talking about two examples of equilibrium in 2D and in this case we're actually going to be introducing the concept of moments so you'll see why we need moments um, in our analysis of structure so in the first example we have this little beam here so you can imagine that this is a very basic bridge essentially you have two supports on both sides and then you just have a beam of continuous length of um, constant length and constant thickness and then there is a force which we call P in this case that is basically located right in the middle of this structure now what we need to know is what are going to be the reaction forces acting on the supports that will actually put this system in equilibrium because you know that if this is the only force we have here then this thing is just gonna move down at a constant speed so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to analyze the, the free body diagram. So the free body diagram is just the object itself. So we're going to have our beam here. The external force is going to be P located at a distance of L on 2 on either side. And then we're going to have reaction forces because remember that by Newton's third law, third law we know that um, the force we're going to have reaction forces because for every action there's an equal opposite reaction in this case the supports will exert forces against the beam so let's call this reaction a and let's call this one reaction b now normally these things that you see here are fixed supports which means they're just fixed to the ground they will normally have reactions along the x direction as well but in this case we know we can tell from intuition that because this force is just going straight down then the only reactions are going to be going up because there are no external forces in the x direction so now what we're going to do is we're going to apply um, the equations of equilibrium which are essentially forces in the y direction and for all purposes we're going to assume that our axes are labeled in the following way so y going up x to the right some of the forces in the y direction need to be equal to zero and we have two forces going up so we have RA plus RB and then this we have this P term here going down so that's going to be minus P and there, therefore we're going to have RA plus RB equals to P now <clears throat> we could do the sum of the forces in the x direction but the problem with that is that we have no external forces in the x direction so that's not going to tell us anything it's just going to say zero equals to zero which is pretty useless for our purposes now you notice that we have one equation here but we have two unknowns we want to find r a and r b we only have one equation so how are we going to do this well this is where moments come in we know that if we choose any point on this structure let's say a point a which is point A here we know that the sum of the rotations or the moments about that point need to be zero because this thing is not really rotating is it so every point on this beam will have equilibrium in terms of rotation and in terms of forces as well so let's assume that the rotations happen in this direction so sum of the moments equals to zero and now what we need to do is we need to define what moments are so a moment or, or a torque so let's just say torque equals a moment is just a force times a perpendicular distance so if you have something like an arm or, or something like a bar then you apply a force at an angle and then you, you're causing a rotation about some fixed point then the vertical component of that force so Fy which is perpendicular to that bar and then the distance between the point of rotation and the point of contact with the force d then this is what is going to give you your moment so if we look into this particular case if we take some of the moments about a point a and when we do static analysis we neglect the thickness or the width of any of the structure remember so we assume that this point is just the same point all across here we know that the total sum of the forces here is going to be well we have P times this length that's causing a rotation in this direction so we're gonna have well that's positive so that's P times L over 2 that's one moment and then we have RB and then the total length from 
A to B is L, so RB times L, which is going in the opposite direction, RB times L, that's going to cause another moment going that way. So now what we can do, and do you notice what we did here? We actually, we can solve for this and we get an expression for RB. So L cancels out and then we have RB is just going to be P on 2, which means that RA is also going to be P on 2, because P on 2 plus P on 2, that gives us P. We notice what we did here. By essentially by grabbing some of the force some of the moments about A, we neglected the effect of R A because the distance from point A to R A is just zero. There's no perpendicular distance here because the force is acting exactly at that point. So by taking some of the moments there, we eliminated this force which allowed us to solve for the other one and then solve for both using the other equation. So this is why we need some of the moments. And in general, this is actually sufficient to solve for any system that has a reasonable amount of defined external forces. Okay, so that's essentially it. Now let's have a look at the next problem here. So this one is going to be a little bit more interesting. Again, we're going to neglect the actual thickness and width of this structural member. And the other thing that we're going to neglect is any deflection. So when we study solid mechanics later on, we're going to see how th objects in reality tend to deform. So things bend, things break. So in statics, we usually just assume they're rigid. So that means that they do not deform or, or uh, in any way. So they just retain the same shape. So that's what allows us to do this very basic analysis using forces. But it works for most purposes. And when we're designing structures, this is where we start off at and the formation just naturally comes in afterwards. Okay, so we're gonna have, let's call this point A. What we wanna do is we know we're always gonna have reaction forces acting at some support. So in this case, this would be a wall. So we can say some of the forces in the y direction for the whole structure need to add up to zero. But wait, do we know what the forces are? Well, we need to draw the, the free body diagram. So let me just draw it here on the side. We're going to have this member here. We have some force acting at this point F. Then we have some angle theta. This length here is L. This length is just 2L. And now we're going to have two reaction forces. This is a fixed support, which means that we have reaction forces and also reaction moments, as we'll see. So I am going to assume, it doesn't matter which direction we assume the reaction force to be in, because the, the sign of the final answer will tell us the, what the correct answer is. So let's say reaction at AX and reaction at AY. And we know because this is a fixable, we're usually just going to have a moment reaction. And I'm going to assume that the bending moment reaction at A is going to be going in this direction. So let's have a crack at this. Let's start off with the sum of the forces in the y direction. And basically we're going to write the following. We have the reaction force at A going upwards. And now we have the vertical component of this force, which is going to be F times cosine of theta, which implies that RAY is just going to be equal to F cosine of theta. Now, if we do the sum of the forces in the x direction, that's also going to be zero, and then we're going to have this force, Rax, minus the horizontal component of this force, which is going to be F sine of theta, and this implies that Rax is equal to F sine of theta. And these are fine because the parameters we're given are theta and the external force. So we already saw for two reaction forces in terms of the external ones. Now we need to find out what this bending moment is because we know this is going to cause a rotation here. So how do we do that? Well, let's say some of the moments about the point A. And I'm doing it that like this because we know there's a bending moment reaction at point A. But this is the sum of all moments about the point A. So it's a little bit different. And let's assume that this is the positive direction. So first of all, well, we know that this moment is going to be 
included because moments essentially act at every point so we're gonna have moment a that's the one we need to solve for and now we have <clears throat> a very intriguing case here we could actually draw a line that goes like this and then take the perpendicular component of that but a much easier way and usually it's more accurate to do it this way is to break this down into two moments one that is caused by the perpendicular distance between this point and the vertical component of the force so this force here and then one that is caused basically by this horizontal component and this distance so let's break that down if we take the distance here that's distance l here times the horizontal component of this force so minus l times f sine theta that's the horizontal component so this is distance times force that gives us the moment and now we have the vertical component going down which is f cosine of theta times 2l so we're gonna have minus 2l f cosine of theta so as it turns out in the end we're going to have the following we're gonna have L times F times sine theta plus T cosine of theta equals to MA. So we just found what that moment is, and that mo moment reaction is essentially acting in this direction. So we had three unknowns. We found, we found the three unknowns in terms of the external parameters. And this is how you combine moments and forces to find to analyze structures that are undergoing both some kind of external forces and also rotations.